Welcome to Triumph IAS. It's a daily mains practice question and answer series. This program is exclusively designed for UPSC CSE aspirants. In this video discussion, we will discuss UPSC CSE mains previous 25 year questions. Question number 1. What are the two major legal initiatives by the state since independence addressing discrimination against scheduled tribes, STs? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. Scheduled tribes, STs, are social groups recognized by the Indian constitution for their primitive traits, distinctive culture, and geographical isolation. The tribal population of the country, as per 2011 census constituting 8.6% of the total population with 705 notified tribes. The main body of the answer should be Number 1. Since independence Government of India took many legal initiatives to address the discrimination against scheduled tribes. Number 2. The Scheduled Castes and Tribes Prevention of Atrocities Act 1989 was enacted by Parliament to prevent atrocities against scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and to provide for relief and rehabilitation of victims of such offences. Number 3. All the offences under the Act are cognizable and the police can arrest the offender without warrant and start investigation without taking orders from the court. Number 4. The minimum punishment in most cases is six months imprisonment while the maximum is five years with fine. The provision for anticipatory bail is not available to the offender under the Act. The victim of the atrocity is entitled to compensation. Number 5. In the colonial era, the British diverted abundant forest wealth of the nation to meet their economic needs. This destroyed the symbiotic relationship between forests and forest-dwelling communities. The Forest Rights Act, 2006 is a radical change in this regard. Conclusion of the answer is the Act provides for ownership to land that is being cultivated by Tiavan Bialis or forest dwellers subject to a maximum of 4 hectares. It also provides rights to use minor forest produce, grazing areas and pastoral routes. The Act also gives management rights to protect forests and wildlife and right to be rehabilitated in case of illegal eviction or forced displacement. Question number 2 how far do you agree with the view that the focus on lack or availability of food as the main cause of hunger takes the attention away from ineffective human development policies in India? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. In terms of policy hunger as an issue is not dealt with directly and with urgency. Instead it is kept under the larger purview of economic development which expects that wealth will percolate to solve the problem of hunger. The main body of the answer should be Number 1. The issue of lack of availability of food and poverty are not isolated from the pathetic situation of human development in India. Lack of universal education and limited employment opportunities push millions to the cycle of poverty every year. Absence of universal health coverage force many poor people to divert their hard earned money into medical expenses. Number 2. India now has worse rates of malnutrition than sub-Saharan Africa. India ranks below Sudan and Zimbabwe in the Global Hunger Index. The Indian states fall either in the category of medium or low human development as per the Human Development Report classification. Number 3. The urban and rural poor dependent on private entities for essential services like education and transportation which are likely to be more expensive. Consequently, the portion of income that can be spent on food also shrinks. Number 4. The urban and rural poor dependent on private entities for essential services like education and transportation which are likely to be more expensive. Consequently, the portion of income that can be spent on food also shrinks. Conclusion of the answer is No doubt if the issue of human development is dealt with sincerity, the issue of hunger and poverty will automatically be taken care of. 
disparities whether rural-urban or regional need to be reduced. The social protection needs of special groups such as migrant workers, the elderly, persons with disabilities, and Tiawan BILIS should be addressed. Question number 3. How important are vulnerability and risk assessment for pre-disaster management? As an administrator, what are key areas that you would focus in a disaster management? Let's start with the introduction of the answer. A proper system of disaster management focuses on both pre-disaster and post-disaster management. The main body of the answer should be Vulnerability and risk assessment is very important for pre-disaster management because number 1. If we have proper assessment of risk associated with disaster-prone region, it will help in preparedness of these regions through drills, public awareness, inventory etc. E.g. If a region is prone to flood, then pre-alarm system, required medication stocking in advance etc. can be done before a disaster happens. Number 2. LF we have accurate vulnerability data or idea, then preventive measures can be effectively implied. Number 3. Vulnerability and risk assessment is important to write policies, ordinances or law and effective DRM planning for proper mitigation. Number 4. As an administer, the areas of concern for proper disaster risk management system are. Number 5. Pre-disaster areas which should be focused are preparedness, mitigation and prevention of the disaster. Number 6. Post-disaster areas of focus are Option A. Response Option B. Recovery and Rehabilitation Conclusion of the answer is Medical services psychological support alternate livelihood, temporary shelter, Relief delivery operations during disaster will be the main focus area. Relocation, structural retrofitting, substantial livelihood and infrastructural rehabilitation will be the focus areas post-disaster.